So congratulations to Coach Kelly and uh, and Notre Dame. Uh, they played cleaner and they played more effectively than we did to win the game. Ultimately, our inability to consistently protect our quarterback in the pass game uh, was the difference in the game. Uh, so eight sacks uh, on the day, two of which, um, well, one was a direct defensive score for Notre Dame. The other uh, led, obviously, to a score. And those 14 points were basically the difference in the game. Um, that does not mean we win if those were taken away, but that was the kind of game we were anticipating where it was within a field goal at the end. Uh, we thought we had to steal a possession or possessions. That happened with um, our onside kick, uh, and they had one turnover there, but ultimately four turnovers in the second half offensively. Uh, when you're playing a strong team on the road, that's um, in most every case insurmountable in terms of uh, your chance to, to effectively then manage and win the game. So again, the four turnovers in the second half mostly directly or tied directly to our protection. I thought defensively we played relatively consistent the entire game. I was disappointed in the one rushing touchdown we gave up um, second half late. Um, and so that, uh, I was not pleased with that one. So, uh, yeah, going into the bye week now and uh, some weaknesses exposed, some areas to improve, targeted, and that's what we'll do. Let's start with Jeff and David and Mike. How big a concern was Notre Dame's pass rush coming into this game and against your offensive line? Um, not more than usual. Um, and just to be blunt, most of it was four-man rush um, and their base defense, which so it was simply a edge rusher uh, technically beating or effort-wise beating a, an offensive tackle. So it wasn't, there's was nothing schematically. I won't take anything away from the Notre Dame players. Uh, they played hard, they rushed effectively, and they made the plays when they needed to. And creating turnovers is, is uh, changes games. And certainly with five on the day, if, I think if we would say, go to Notre Dame, and if you turn it over five times, you'll win, that's, that would be uh, uncommon if that happened. So our ball security tied directly to um, pass rush in four-man rush situations, which is what the defense would love. If you can pressure the quarterback to four and still play coverage, um, there's relatively low risk, and that's what they were able to do. Bronco, on any of those sacks, did you feel like Bryce could have gotten rid of the ball for a little bit? Well, I, I think, um, so I, I did my best to scan, and in real time it's difficult to scan protection and see the routes and where it could have been gone or where it could have been delivered to. I would say most of them, there was no separation, there wasn't someone open. Um, obviously, it's always better to get rid of the ball and have an incomplete than a sack. So, results speaking wise, that's what you'd hope for, but there's nothing I can say now where he was missing open targets or, or there was clearly things he didn't see. To me, it looked like um, the routes were covered effectively from beginning to end. Protection couldn't hold long enough for routes to separate is what I think happened. Your message to the guys afterward, it sounds like your take here is we made some mistakes that took you out of the game. Uh, when you tell them, is it a positive experience coming here and, and being competitive for a half, or is it just frustrating that you didn't necessarily put your best foot forward? Oh, I think it's the barometer. Um, I, I talk to my team just like I talk to, I'm talking right now. I, there's no reason to change tones. We have some weaknesses that were exposed if we had them we executed better in those areas, we would have played better and had a great chance to win the game. That's what we believed. I still think that. Um, however, eight sacks, five turnovers, those numbers are, are uh, too, uh, too substantial to then say um, we realistically had a chance to overcome those. 17-14 at halftime was exactly what we had hoped. Um, then the four turnovers in the second half, insurmountable to overcome. and. And so we need to prove now that we can sustain and play the way we played the first half for an entire t half against a really good team on the road if we want to move to the top of our league and have national prominence. Uh, Doug and Jerry. Uh, 43 pass attempts with Bryce, 16 rushes. Uh, you have to worry at all about him getting hit and how, how he's going to last. Sure. And I think that, that ties to something pretty um, pretty simple that, that you're on is um, we have to generate a run game at a much more consistent level. It's not only quarterback driven, that when we hand the ball off, we can run the ball effectively and get yards. So 
there aren't as many pass attempts, which then puts us in the situation that we ended up in today. And so the lack of balance or inability to run the ball currently, I would say, is the backstory to the point I'm making about protection. And you worry about boys getting hit too Sure, late. sure, absolutely. And Jerry, not only the number of times, but um, how clean some of those shots are coming. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you can win a game like this without an effective running game, and what are you going to have to do going forward? Yeah, uh, uh, you can win a game. Uh, quality of opponent certainly is going to matter. And so you can win against some teams like this. You won't be able to win against um, teams to, to take over our league or to uh, compete at a higher level, which is where, where we want to go from last year's 8-5 and five team. So the run game development is is again the best way I can say it is foundational or backstory to the pass protection which is becoming frequent and obvious of when we're going to throw it and our inability to protect consistently is leading to the turnovers so it's sequential. Um, I will say that when we're throwing it our receivers are catching it well and they're doing a nice job so I think we all saw that. They're capable and they were effective when the ball got to them so we were encouraged by that. Um, and disproportionately right now, if you want to get the ball to someone, it's to our receivers. So we have to find the run game to, to start to provide some sense of balance. And how to do it, that's a work in progress, obviously. What was the difference in the second half? Um, like, were they doing anything different? No, it was the exact same. It was just simply um, some clean shots on our quarterback um, and hitting him so hard that he fumbled twice. Um, and so there were more turnovers, but the first two, in reality, were the difference um, when they picked one up and scored and the other one down to the three or four yard line. We'll take our last two questions from uh, But no, Jeff. no, there was no difference. They were playing the same. Both, uh, both Hasis and Joe Reed had career days receiving. Uh, coming in, did you think, was the idea to highlight them and just what about their play? We, we like our receivers and, and they played as a position group. Um, at a level that we had expected and hoped they would. And so they were consistent. The stage was not too big for them. They made critical catches. They made contested catches. They were productive and really did a nice job. So I was I was impressed and pleased with, with how they played. Could you tell us quickly the backstory of the onside kick? And was it there in the first half and you were saving for that it, moment? Exactly. We, we, uh, we saw it during the week or in leading in preparation. I was just trying to find the right time. and. Um, and so close to doing it in the first half, but we had the lead, and it didn't quite seem like we needed to steal the possession yet. Um, with us kicking off the second half, I wanted to get the ball and score uh, to, to start the second half. And the first part worked out well. We didn't score, but um, we executed the kick exactly how we had hoped, and I was encouraged by that. Were you that good with it in practice? We were. I'm not calling it in the game if it doesn't look like that in practice. <laughs> Kicking the plays are too hard. I also thought Billy Kemp did a nice job in the punt return game today. Uh, he was gritty and tough, and he got us a few extra yards.